In 1987, Lorenz Aldua proposed a political, intercultural, decolonial, intersectional, and queer perspective of the lesbian body in her famous Borderlands, La Fronteira, a book that queers the very act of writing, assuming an autobiographical gesture that intersperses prose, poetry, and personal stories, mixing invention and memory. For Lorenz Aldua, the concept of the border refers both to the physical boundary between the United States and Mexico, but also to other contexts of oppression, producing an intricate network of differences and also resistance to a geopolitical border. As she famously stated, and I quote, the border between the United States and Mexico is una herida abierta, in which the third world grates against the first and bleeds, end quote. But this open wound is also used by Anzaldúa in another context. She says, and I quote, La vulva es una herida abierta, end quote. This imagery thus condenses the violent aspect of the border, borderland, in the cisgender body of the lesbian and her queer sexuality. For Anzaldúa, the borderland is a fugitive and indeterminate zone produced by the emotional residue of a real border. It is a state in constant transition. It is inhabited by the marginal, and I quote, Los atravesados live here. The squint-eyed, the perverse, the queer, the troublesome, the mongrel, the mulatto, the half-breed, the half-dead. In short, those who cross over, pass over, or go through the confines of the normal, end quote. Inspired by Gloria Zaldúa's concept of the borderland, we suggest, in film studies, the notion of body lands as a space for both the experience of oppression and the image that escapes it. A space in the audiovisual landscape for lesbian desire, which oscillate, oscillates between existence and erasure, between denial and death, but which also suggests ways to destabilize the dominant cis-heteronormativity in films. It is not our intention to rewrite the concept of borderland because it will always be much bigger, more comprehensive and more complex, but we want to lend it as a critical gesture, a lesson taken from Azaldua herself to think about lesbian desire in cinema. Bodyland is the right to the filmic space as a queer narrative, and for this very reason, it is political. The body, the body land, therefore, is physical and symbolic, empirical and reinvented. Body, the body land is a land of nobody, because we lesbians inhabit the abyss of image. But how do we mobilize this concept in our encounters with the films? Here we'd like to focus on the possibility given to us by a US pioneer and two young lesbian Brazilian filmmakers. In 1976, Barbara Hammer films multiple orgasms, where the relationship with natural landscapes takes a very interesting dimension. In just over five minutes, Hummer superimposes images of rock formation and close-ups of her pussy while she masturbates and later of her ecstatic face. The overlapping of the lesbian body and the rocks creates patterns that inscribe themselves on the surfaces as if they were cave paintings. There, in the ancient cracks and crevices, drawn by the patient and insistent work of waters and winds, the desire that refuses heteronormative is overwritten. The stones and caves receive Hammer's body with the generous passivity of the raw material. The images amalgam amalgamate in such a way that we can but speculate in delight. What if the history of art could be told from these inscriptions created by Barbara Hammer, rejecting the traditional narrative that places the rock inscriptions of Chauvet or Lascaux as foundational? In Werner Herzog's uh, Cave of Forgotten Dreams, a documentary about the Sh Chauvet cave, the authorship of this primitive art is taken as masculine, and this presumption is never questioned. Let us try to displace this presumption and establish another narrative, one in which the gesture of creation is mixed with enjoyment creating a haptic landscape for the lesbian body. Multiple orgasms builds another landscape, a body land, 
in this landscape, the, film, the body of the film and Hammer's lesbian body are intermingled. Similarly, Chris Lira's short film, Quebra Mar, places its character on the rocks, but now in a less arid landscape. Lira's film follows a group of young lesbians who go to a small town by the sea to celebrate New Year's Eve. In the house they share, lesbian friends welcome each other, sing, love, and even exercise the memory of the trauma of bombs and gunshots that torments one of the characters who took part um, in political demonstrations. On the beach, in the backyard of the house, on the rocks that surround the beach, they talk and open their bodies to this landscape. In the play of the mansions the film constructs, the sea renders their body small in long shots, while the stones serve as a backdrop for close-up images of their bodies and faces. In one of these, in one of these uh, shots, a hand caresses a crack on the rock. Quebra participates in our fabulation of art history. The lesbian hand leaves its tray on the rock writes its desire and its pleasure, returning to the museum, the heterocentric narrative of the linear trajectory of art, as if this trajectory did not in fact imitate the dynamics of these hands that masturbates the vagina and the stone, the coming and going of the fingers, the circular movement, the expansion of the touch to feel more of the body itself. Would it be too crazy to say that at that moment, Kebramas body touches multiple orgasms, generating clear, queer pleasure from the exercise of our lesbian ventry. Would it be too foolish to claim that it is in the cracks of that rock that these two lab lesbian films come together and come? Finally, let's consider A Felicidade Delas, a short film directed by Carol Rodriguez. In her film, two young black women fleeing the police that represses a popular demonstration find themselves hidden in an abandoned building. In the darkness of this space, graffiti on the walls come to view thanks to the light of cell phones. The short accompanies the two women in the exploration of this place until it culminates in a moment when one of them decides to write on the walls of this history of art that we are trying to create, producing the image of two women embracing. In the same way as in Quebra Mar, Carol Rodriguez's film associates the lesbian body with the proximity to the waters, radicalizing it. The desire in this uh, labyrinth where the characters are found leads to the reconfiguration of the lovers at the, at the end, transforming them into water overflowing until it takes over the city, thus a huge body land of water is formed. The questions that led us to the concept of body land continue to resonate as we understand that this theoretical fable of ours does not constitute an, a panacea for problems such as the subject-object relationship with the gaze, the mobilization of the body and the desire to understand cinema. However, it is through this body land that we want to continue thinking about possible theories, methodologies, approaches to the, for the field of cinema and audiovisual, investing calmly, courageously, and carefully in other ways of facing the image.